You don't get to tell me to sit down. This is my house, and you ain't my daddy. Okay, listen. He wants things to go back to the way they were. I'm not going to stand by and just watch y'all burn down everything I've built for this community. I'm the one that's paying for everything. And where do you think he's getting his money from, Tracy? Is he your silent investor? Only now this investor is tired of being quiet. Are you saying if I want to keep rock going, I got to answer to you? Who's your daddy now? What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love the shy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today we're going to be talking about the shy season five, episode two. This is the recap. Now, I'm going to try my best to go over all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And man, what an episode, man. What an episode. I believe this episode set up a good foundation uh, as far as what we're going to see for the rest of the season, the storylines are starting to build up more and more. What do y'all think about Keisha and Emmett? You can see, especially in this episode, Keisha's body language is telling us something. It's telling us that she does have these feelings for Emmett, especially when Tiffany was dogging him out. You can tell because Keisha was really trying to, to defend him, in my opinion, right? Now, she was trying to defend him, trying to take the slack off Emmett when Tiffany was dogging him. And you can look at her face and tell that it's something there. And I believe as these episodes air out, we're going to see more and more of this whole Keisha and Emmett thing. As I told you, I believe the two are going to hook up once again this season. And also, what do y'all think about your boy Q making that return, telling Tracy, like, look, I've been funding everything. You know, he told Tracy to sit down. Tracy was talking about, look, you ain't about to talk to me like that. You're not my daddy. But once she found out that Q was funding everything, that he was the silent investor, your boy Q to her, look, you can call me daddy. So this is going to be a very, very interesting storyline with the OG making that return. And all Duda can do is just sit back like, man, I guess he's right. Because Duda, from the looks of it, he's going to be calling Q daddy as well. And your boy Treg, man, he was in his feelings in this episode because he's like, look, I am about to sit up here and do this work with Duda, especially after, you know, what we've done in the past at the same time, you know, he ain't trying to sign no NDA papers and he understands that Duda ain't nothing but bad news. But we know based on the trailers that Treg will be running for city council and him hooking up with Duda's god niece is going to happen, whether it's a lie or not. And I'm pretty sure that your boy Treg is going to clap those cheeks just based off his first interaction with her, the way he was looking and the way she was looking at him. It seems like he's going to have to get over Imani because um, from what he was saying, she ain't coming back. We already know that she would not be in this season. So let's go over episode two. This is the recap. As I told you guys, I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. Now, the episode starts off exactly where we left off in episode one. Tracy's having a conversation with Q and Duda. She wants to know why he's back in town. What is his plan? And of course, your boy Q said he don't like how things is being ran. He doesn't like that they took away the police. And he wants things to go back the way it used to be. Him and, you know, Tracy, they was having a little argument. Tracy's talking about, you know, you're not going to be talking to me any type of way. You're not my daddy. He's telling her to sit down. Tracy explains that she does not want them coming back and messing up everything that she has pretty much built. And we're talking about the community center that she has, Rock, and of course, Trinity House. Now, Duda says, look, I am the reason why you even got that, right? And this is where Q comes in. He says, well, you know, how do you think he even got the money to fund those places, right? So Tracy says, so... To keep Rock running, that means I have to answer to you. And this is where your boy Q tells her, well, who's your daddy now? Because Tracy, she was going off on him talking about you're not my daddy. You're not about to talk to me any type of way. Well, Q once again proves that the OG triple OG is always a step ahead of the game, right? And Duda, he looked pissed off. He looked very pissed off. At the end of the day, we know Tracy was, you know, blaming Q for everything, talking about the reason, you know, our son is not here it's probably because of you. Now, we know Q put in that work and he got rid of Detective Wallace in season one. But all the drama that's been going on, I mean, it's understandable why Tracy would think that. 
But as of right now, he is back and it seems like he is calling all the shots. And if you want those places to continue to run, you better be listening to your boy Q. And Q was talking about we need the police, you know what I'm saying? Because the police ain't nothing but pawns, right? And he tells Duda, you should have never even been in the whole politic thing anyway because you belong in the streets. I'm telling you right now, Duda was pissed off, man. I cannot wait to see how, you know, this whole relationship between Duda and Q is going to play out this season. Then we get to Emmett and we get to EJ and the rest of Emmett's sons. Did y'all peep what EJ said? Because Emmett was like, look, you know, you listen to me. I'm your daddy. And I could have sworn EJ told him only on the weekends. So what the hell be going on with Tiffany and EJ when Emmett ain't around? Emmett, of course, he was reading a bedtime story. And we already know these little fairy tales most likely don't come true all the time. And this is what Emmett was talking about. He's like, look, y'all gonna learn. You know what I'm saying? Emmett was in his feelings in this episode. And then we get to D-Ray's character, Marshawn. And Marshawn is pretty much trying to uplift males. He's trying to tell them like, look, stop going out there. You know, having all this sex, be smart, make smart decisions. You know, be celibate, right? Emmett is listening to him. Of course, we know at the end of the episode, Emmett will be going on this whole 40 day challenge, but we're going to see how that plays out. Now, Tiffany does show up the next morning. Emmett is upset. He's like, look, I need help. I got three kids up in here. Of course, Tiffany is telling him, well, this is what you get for having all this unprotected sex. I mean, this is the life. Now, of course, Tiffany tells Emmett, like, look, she's not staying with her moms no more. So you already know Emmett know what time it is. He says, so who you stand with? She says a friend, of course, we find out or Emmett finds out that it is her weed supplier. And Emmett is upset. He's like, look, I still don't want my son around a random dude. Now, Tiff does tell Emmett, like, look, make sure you go pick up EJ from school. I believe he's going to be starting at a whole entirely different school that's not as close as the old school, right? So Emmett must make sure he goes to pick up his son, which we know later on in the episode. That does not happen. Then we get to Papa Maisha. Kevin and Jake, they're going to school. Of course, Papa is getting all the slack from everybody. They're making all these memes and stuff about him when he went off on Jake um, at the pep rally. And everything is fun and games, but Papa does not like it. He's like, man, so people, they just continue to talk about you each and every day. And this is where Kevin tells him, like, look, it's going to die off eventually. You just got to chill out. Of course, Papa does, you know, make a post talking about all the greats get dragged. And I'm thinking like, dang, this dude, Papa don't care. This new Papa and his approach in season five, you know, is definitely catching the attention of everybody. And it seems like he is getting a lot of slack for it. And as you can see, he falls down and Maisha was like, see, God don't like ugly. Then we get to Kevin and Lene. You already know they into these video games on some hardcore type stuff. They're trying to start a, you know, a gamers club at the school. But the security guards is like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't bringing these systems up in here. Y'all got to go down to the principal's office. So now they have to explain on why they even got these systems in the school in the first place. And they have to explain it to the principal. But luckily, Mr. Bradford comes and he helps them out. He tells the principal, like, look, they can start, you know, this gamers club or whatever. But they have to make sure they have at least five people in there. And if that is the case, if that happens... He will actually fund this, you know, this club to be, you know, an official club in the school. So as of right now, it is looking real good for Kevin and Lene's game club. Hopefully nothing crazy happens, but usually with Kevin, it's always something. Then we get to your boy Rashad, Tracy, and Treg, and comes to find out, it seems like the people, they like Treg, and they think he should be running for city council. Now, we talked about this in the past. We knew Treg was going to be in politics in season five, but Treg... He ain't even believing it for real. He's like, man, really? You know, he has a record. He ain't believing that this can even happen. Of course, Rashad and Tracy is telling him, just believe in yourself. It can actually happen. Rashad had me cracking up because Rashad was like, look, once you get up in there, you can start wilding. You can do whatever you want. I mean, this boy Rashad was on one in this episode. But Tracy tells Trey that she's going to make some calls, which we know who them calls is going to go to. Then that's going to be your boy Duda. But she's going to make those calls to make sure he can get that record cleared. And that way, this man can run for city council. But y'all know, it's always something if you're doing anything with Tracy and if Duda is involved. Then we get back to Rob and Tiff. And Rob is telling Tiffany, like, look, maybe I can just have a conversation with Emmett and I can smooth things out. No biggie. We know Tiff is telling him that Emmett is real possessive. And, you know, 
it's going to be a little bit different. It ain't going to be as easy as he thinks. Now, Rob, he really wants to be with Tiffany, just them two. Nobody else involved, just exclusive. He tells her, look, I'm going to be the only one for you. You're going to be the only one for me. Plain and simple, especially if you're going to be messing around. But it seems like Tiffany does not want to be exclusive. It seems like Tiffany wants to be out there in those streets because she don't want nobody tying her down. But that's just my intake on it. What y'all think? Now, we get to Peaches. Jake's mom, she has returned. I told you guys, I think the last time we saw her was season three, episode one. She was not in the best of shape mentally, physically. She was all messed up, right? But now she's clean. She is back. She is trying to make sure she can be in her son's life. Of course, Jake is like, why are you even here? Like, what's going on? Um, now, luckily, she was on the list. Due to put her on the list as one of the people that can, you know, pick Jake up or whatever, even though Treg is his guardian, you know, that list was made by Duda. Now, once they go out, they go to Smokey's, they try to catch up. She's like, look, I want to talk to your brother. You know, I want to fix things. I'm here to be in your life. So what do y'all think about, you know, Peaches being back? It is good that his mom's is back. She could have just left and been out and never came back. I'm glad that she got herself clean and she came back and she's trying to fix things. Then we get to your boy Rashad and he has found his love interest. And that's a good thing because he needs somebody and he sees this young lady. She comes into the community center and her name is Deja. I mean, Rashad wasn't playing around. He's like, look, I got to pull out all the tricks to get this girl's number. I mean, he was in there singing that Luther. I mean, he was in there putting in that work. He got her number the old school way. Of course, at first, you know, once she found out that he's been in jail in the past, you know, she was kind of, kind of hesitant, right? But once he explained everything, she opened up a little bit. She said, you know what? You know, I'm going to give you my name. It's Deja. And she's going to give him, you know, her number as well. So your boy Rashad is looking pretty good for him this season as far as his love interest. What do you guys think about that? Then we get to your girl Jada. We talked about this scene earlier on this week between Jada. Uh, of course, we know Tracy was there and Nina and Dre. She tells her girls that she kissed Darnell. Of course, Dre does not agree with this. Remember, Dre understands who Darnell is. You know, her and Darnell used to mess around before in the past. The rumor was Darnell was the one that turned her out to girls because of, you know, the bad relationship that they had back in high school, right? Now, of course, Dre is like, Suede is the one. And we learn more about um, Nina and Dre's relationship that, of course, therapy is something that they're doing. On top of that, we know that maybe your girl... Nina is bored with the relationship. So even though they're having a conversation about Jada and what she should do as far as Swade and Darnell, we are learning more that Nina and Dre, they're still trying to fix things within their marriage, which we find out that the whole therapy comment was true. They're actually in therapy. Um, at the same time, we know what happened last season between Nina and Dre and what Nina did. You know, hanging out, kicking it with Portia, aka the brat. Y'all know what went down. So, of course, there still are going to be issues in their marriage. But what do y'all think about Jada and Darnell and Sway? I mean, that's going to be a little sticky situation for your girl Jada because she's telling Sway one thing. But if you check her body language, she is feeling Darnell. So, I can't wait to see how that's all going to end. Now, we get to Keisha and Tiffany. They're having another conversation about Rob and Emmett. And we already know Tiffany, she's going to tell Keisha everything. She tells her what Rob said about being exclusive, just them being together for real. And, you know, this is where Tiffany says, look, Rob is going to be my Russell Wilson. I don't know about that. I don't know about Russell Wilson, especially if you ain't even trying to be, you know, down for the cause and be in a real relationship. She says she's over Emmett. Now, what do y'all think about that? Do y'all honestly believe she's over Emmett? Did y'all peep how Keisha was looking when she asked her that question and Tiffany says she's over him? See, that's going to be telling you because once Emmett and Keisha hook up once again this season, I told you guys my prediction. I think they hook it up. And once they do hook up, and if that does happen, whether they make out or whatever, we're going to see how Tiffany feels about that. We're going to see if she's over Emmett then. Is this going to be a little bit different seeing that Tiffany and Keisha have gotten so close? So what do you guys think about it? It's going to be crazy. I cannot wait to see how it's all going to play out. It's going to be a huge one, y'all. Trust me, because y'all know Tiffany going to definitely be pissed off. Then we get back to school and Kevin has got his eyes on his new love interest, Simone. Now, we seen Simone last season. 
Kevin was dancing with her. Remember when he was so upset trying to get over Gemma? So he decided to dance with another girl. Well, this was that young lady that he was dancing with, right? And Kevin, he's looking at her. He's like, man, I know this chick. Like, what did we do together? And this is where he remembers, you know, their past and them dancing. Now, we know this Simone character, she has made her first um, NFT sale. This young lady is very smart. She's out there making all types of moves. Kevin likes it. And he's like, okay, let me go ahead and approach her and see, you know, what time it is. So he goes over there, has a conversation with her. But the way she's talking to him got me confused. She's telling him, like, look, do you believe in space and all this stuff? I'm looking like, what the hell is going on? Like, what is this conversation about? We talking about aliens, ET, space. I don't know what she's talking about. Next thing I know, she tells Kevin, like, look, you can hit me up, you know, but I only text an emoji. So Kevin Good luck with that one. But from the looks of it, in episode three, it seems like Kevin is going to be in love. So maybe she, you know, she has some more, you know, things that Kevin is going to like about her once they start to actually have, you know, deeper conversations. But man, that girl definitely had me all types of confused on what she was talking about. Then we get to Peaches. She's having a conversation with Treg. She is telling him that she is back. She is clean and she wants to be in his life and she wants to be in Jake's life. Of course, Treg ain't having it. He was pissed off at first, talking about why'd you even come back? Of course, she is telling him that she loves him. And Treg's like, look, love is more than just words. Like, you gotta actually show it. So, hopefully this season we can see that. I mean, it does seem like she's trying to put in that effort to be in her son's life. I'm just glad that she's back and she's clean. You know, that's a positive in my opinion. Now, we get to your boy Emmett, and Emmett has forgot to go and pick up EJ at four o'clock, like Tiffany said, you already knew this was going to happen based off that conversation. Now, Emmett goes to the school and he learns that, you know, EJ has been picked up and he's not been picked up by Tiffany. He's been picked up by Rob and Emmett is, he's heated. He's pissed off. He's like, really? I can't believe she had this dude pick up my son, right? So, of course, Emmett's going to be pissed off at Rob. He's going to have an attitude problem when he goes to pick up EJ. And I'm not really mad at Rob. Rob was just trying to help out when he had a conversation with Emmett. He says, look, I'm a team player. At the same time, I can understand Emmett being pissed off. I mean, I will be pissed off. I will be pissed off at myself for forgetting to go pick him up. But at the same time, it is understandable because in Emmett's perspective, it's like, man, this random dude that I don't even know, my son doesn't even know like that, is picking him up. Tiffany put him on the list. Like, what the hell is going on? So it is all understandable. Now, Emmett does have a conversation with Tiffany. He's pissed off. She's telling him he should have never been late. He's like, why the hell did you even put him on the emergency list? We know Tiffany is telling... Emmett like look he's no random dude he's a good person whatever I mean she said she's trying her best so she pretty much just hangs up on Emmett she's pissed off at him now we know that Tiffany and Keisha they kicking it and Keisha she hears the whole conversation she is telling Tiffany like look just take it easy on him we know that Keisha in my opinion <laughs> has those feelings for Emmett so she's always going to look out for him no matter what but Keisha and Tiffany, they go out and have, you know, some girl time. You know, they partying. Right before they even went out, man, your girl Tiffany was telling Keisha to make sure she smashed a few of those college dudes for her. So I'm going to tell you right now, this whole thing between those two, it will blow up. Just wait on it. Now we get back to Jada and Sway. Jada has told Sway the truth. She told him, like, look, she kissed Darnell. Of course, Sway, he lets us know that you know, he wants to take this whole thing serious. He really loves Jada. So he is willing to work through all of this. He is telling Jada, are you willing to fight for us? And of course, Jada tells him like, yes, I love you too. I'm willing to fight. But trust me, this not going to end well. Y'all seen how Jada moving when Darnell called her. Now, Gemma and Jake, they squashed the little issues that they had in last week's episode. We know Jake was upset about the whole basketball thing. He took out his frustrations on Gemma. Gemma tells him he just needs to learn how to control his emotions and express his feelings in a positive way. So we're going to see if Jake actually does that. We know this thing between Jake and Gemma is, you know, way more serious this season. Now, we see that Peaches has come to the house. She's going to be a part of the family dinner. And it seems like everything is good. And as I told you guys, that is a good thing that Jake and Treg's mom is back in the picture. And she is healthy. Hopefully, everything can continue to go this way and nothing negative affects this. Now, we get to your boy Duda. Of course, everybody wants to know where in the hell did he go? 
Of course, Duda explains that he had to leave. You know, he was going through some things mentally and he had to get himself together. You know, he had to go out there and seek therapy. So Duda is trying to clean up his image. We know someone else has came in and took over as far as the mayor. And now Duda is trying to rebuild his image and he has a game plan. Y'all think Duda is just going to lay down and then come back and not do anything? Oh, hell nah. That definitely is not happening, right? Now, Duda is having a conversation with Tracy. A lot of you guys, y'all ain't liking how Tracy moving, man. I've been seeing y'all comments. Y'all ain't liking how she's been moving. But Duda is telling her, look, he can wipe Treg's record away, but he needs Treg to do exactly what he needs him to do without any slack or any pushback. No questions asked. Of course, Tracy is telling him, yeah, okay, you know, it can happen. We're going to work this out. And, you know, Tracy liked being grabbed. She liked being choked out. I mean... Your boy Duda is going to make sure he clapped those cheeks before it's all said and done. And that's exactly probably what ended up happening, especially after that conversation that they had. But you already know, Treg, he ain't going to be feeling that. He ain't going to be feeling what Tracy's doing. A lot of you guys have said that Tracy's just doing all this stuff because she wants to save her organizations. Now, Marcus has returned. He is telling Treg, like, look, at the end of the day, we going to keep this video just in case your boy Duda He's on one and we need to go ahead and get him up out of here again. We can always have that video. And he tells Treg he needs to have a, you know, a name change, which Treg just uses his real name, which is Victor. We talked about this when Treg first came into the shine, that his real name was Victor, right? Now, we know Tracy will be helping him out. We know Marcus don't trust Tracy. Marcus said this last season, he don't trust her at all. So I already know Marcus was feeling some type of way when Treg told him that Tracy is going to help him clear that record. I already know he was like, oh, hell nah. It's definitely going to be something up if you're dealing with her. Then we get back to Rob and Tiff. And Rob, you know, he's like, look, I understand why Emin is mad. Because if I was him, you know, I won't want you being with nobody else as well. You know, he doesn't agree with the whole open relationship thing at all. He tells her, like, look, I want to be with you. We need to be one-on-one. -on -one. That's it. No one else involved. And he pretty much is telling her, look, I'm not going to force you to make that decision on what you want to do. But you got a decision to make. You got to choose on what you want to do. See, Tiff is cool being all up in there. She got a place to stay. Rob picking up EJ and stuff like that. But when Rob tell her, like, we've been already sleeping around with each other. He wants to take it a little bit more serious. Tiff is kind of hesitant, right? So we're going to see what she wants to do. Based on the season description, it seems like Rob and Tiff will be having a more serious relationship. And it seems like, this relationship is really because of Rob. And that's surprising because Rob seemed like he was just trying to clap those cheeks and bounce or whatever. And that was it. But come to find out, Rob actually seems like he's a cool dude. Like he's trying to, you know, settle down. He ain't trying to be all out there like that. And it seems like Tiff is the one that he has to tie down. I told you guys, if I am Rob, I ain't being with Tiff. You know, clapping those cheeks is one thing, but, you know, having her all up in there and getting involved with her on a serious level, oh, hell nah, I ain't doing it. Just based off the simple fact on how Tiff moves, I couldn't do it. But, you know, more power to Rob. At the end of the day, we know Tiff will feel some type of way um, when Emmett and your girl Keisha ends up making out or hooking up. She's talking about she's over him, but we know that's not going to be the case. And we're going to see exactly how she responds to it. But what do you guys think about this whole Tiff and Rob thing? If you were Rob, would you actually be trying to wipe up Tiffany? Because I damn sure won't be doing it. Then we get to Swade and Emmett. They're out there bowling, having a good old time. Of course, Swade brings up his moms. Y'all know Emmett, man. He ain't trying to hear nothing about his moms. But Swade is like, look, what you think about me and your moms as far as her being happy? And Emmett kept it real. He's like, man, to be honest with you, my mom, you know, she's probably the happiest she's ever been that I ever seen her. But if she ever gets unhappy and she doesn't want to be with you, you know, I'm going to, you know, roll with my mom and, you know, agree on what she wants to do. So Sway understands like, OK, Jada is happy with me. Me and Emmett, we OK. I mean, we went to the same high school together, but we know that Jada, she has other feelings as well. And those other feelings are for your boy Darnell. And Darnell's like, look. What you got on? Darnell, he trying to see what Jada got on. He trying to see some skin. Of course, Jada, she's always doing these certain things when Darnell calls or if Darnell comes over there. This is why I say that she can try to act like her and Suede is all good and she's trying to fix things and fight for them. But for real, she really wants to be with Darnell. They have a history, as Darnell said. And eventually, 
is going to, you know, take over. Those true feelings is going to take over and Jada and Sway's relationship is going to be at risk, in my opinion. Then we get to Duda, Treg, Tracy, and of course, Duda's god niece, Tierra. Now, Treg is pissed off because he's like, ain't no way I'm about to be working with this dude. You got me bent. And he's pissed off because Tracy didn't tell him that Duda was the one that cleared his record. Now, Duda's like, look, I will fund you with this whole city council thing. All you got to do is do exactly what I say. I need you to have a fake relationship with my niece, Tierra. I need y'all to pretty much just take pictures, be together. It's all for show. You know what I'm saying? We got to reinvent you. You got to have a better image. And, you know, if you do these things, I will fund you and pretty sure you're going to win but you got to listen you got to do exactly what i'm talking about of course once tiara comes out your boy treg was looking at her like man you know yeah we can play but um clapping those cheats may be an option and from the looks of it she looking like she want to get them clapped but treg still pissed off even though you know he's probably attracted to tiara he's still like ain't no way like working with duda and duda wants him to sign these nda papers and stuff like that Treg is like, I don't even know if I want to do all this. Like, what happens if I just say no? And this is where Tracy tells him, well, if you say no, everything goes away. Treg is like, what goes away? And this is where she tells him, Trinity House and Rock, it all goes away because Duda is the financer, which we know Q is the investor. So at the end of the day, Treg has all this pressure on him because it's like he said, if I don't do this, everybody loses so we already know why Trey is going to do this because all that pressure and to save everybody um but he did walk away Duda said look let him go we know Trey is going to come back and take the deal when it's all said and done but what do y'all think about that what do y'all think about Tracy and how she's moving at the end of the day Tracy wants to make sure her organizations is in play she does not want to lose them at all but at the same time we know Treg running for city council can help out with a lot of things. It could continue to keep her stuff running. And as I told you guys in the past, this whole thing will help Duda in his rebranding strategy. Bringing in his niece, she's going to help with that. And at the same time, I want to know how Treg is going to feel about Q. What's going to happen with that when he finally meets the OG? You guys let me know. Now we find out that Nina and Dre, they are doing therapy. And that's a good thing, in my opinion, for their marriage. Because they went through a lot last season. Hopefully everything can go well. Based off some of these trailers, they will have some issues. But at least they're working on those issues. And Dre, she seems like she's the one pushing for those things to be worked on. Now, at the end of the episode, your boy Rashad, he ends up having a date with Deja. And she's feeling him, man. He's making her laugh. I mean, they're having a good old time. They vibing. What I do know is she's going to help him fix himself up as well. And they talked about going to like a wine tasting event. I can't wait to see it, man. I can't wait to see your boy Rashad in this relationship. His new love interest is definitely filling him. And hopefully good things can happen for your boy Rashad. Then we get to Papa and Maisha. And Papa is still in his feelings because it's kind of difficult for him as far as how everybody's taking what he did to Jake. He is still struggling, trying to get back on everybody's good side. Now, he does make one more apology to Jake. This time, it's a little bit better. It was funny because Papa was like, you know, I'm sorry for what happened as far as the whole basketball thing. You are good at other things. One of those things is stealing people's girls. But he didn't really want to rehash that. He said, look, you know, Jake is like the brother he never wanted, but he still loves him or whatever. So hopefully everything goes well between Papa and Jake. But based off the trailers, it's definitely still going to be some tension up in the air. Now, the episode ends off with Emmett. He was watching Marshawn, your boy D-Ray, one final time. And D-Ray, once again, he was talking about, look, you got to go celebrate. You want to be your perfect self. You want to make sure, you know what I'm saying, you're in the right state of mind. You got to start this 40-day challenge. So your boy Emmett, he about to be on one, y'all. He said, look, everything that Marshawn was talking about as far as your girl leaving you and all these different things, it was all making sense. So now Emmett is like, I'm going to start this 40-day celibacy challenge and hopefully I can do it. He said he ready. Y'all seen the end of the episode. He said he ready. Do y'all actually think Emmett is ready? Based off the Emmett we've seen in the past, I would say no. Based off this new Emmett, you know, he may have a chance. But if Keisha decides to try to throw it at him, you already know Emmett gonna clap those cheeks if the opportunity presents itself. But 
you know, more power to Emmett, man. I can't wait to see more d race character, man. Dude had me cracking up in this episode. But y'all let me know, man. What do y'all think about episode two? How do y'all see things playing out between your boy Treg, Duda, Tracy, Q? That whole storyline is going to be flat out crazy. Treg most likely will win the whole city council, but messing around with Duda, I mean, that's going to be something. And Duda had me cracking up too, because Treg is like, look, I'm not like you. And Duda said, yeah, you right. You not like me. I'm one of one. Duda like, look, I'm the OG for real. Like, you ain't me. Like, I'm a completely different animal. At the end of the day, we know Duda, he got an answer to somebody. And that somebody, as of right now, is the real OG. And that is Quentin. But uh, y'all let me know how y'all see it all playing out. I will be dropping the episode three, What to Expect, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for all the love, all the support. And I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.